Welcome back to Medical Engineering. So today we want to continue our exploration of image processing techniques and today's focus will be nonlinear systems and nonlinear image processing techniques. Don't worry, we will only look at very simple tricks. But just that you know, we are not just bound to linear systems and convolutions. There's also very effective image processing techniques that are easy to implement but involve already nonlinear systems theory. Okay, so here we go, nonlinear image processing methods. So one very popular choice for a nonlinear method is the so-called median filter. Not to confuse with the mean filter, it's the median. And the median is a nonlinear filter because we are using again a 3x3 neighborhood, but this time we take all of the elements in the 3x3 neighborhood and order them in ascending fashion. So this means that we have to sort, for example, using quick sort, in order to get the sorted array. And then we pick the center value, which is the median of the set. Now, the median is a very useful statistical tool. And in particular, it is very robust against outliers. So if you have a non-Gaussian distribution, then you will realize that the mean and the median can be very far apart from each other. And you can see that if you compute the mean and you have very high or very low values, they will be biased towards them. And there is a case that is very well known to be very hard for mean filters. But if you have this salt and pepper noise and you process it with the median filter, then you can see that those outliers that we have here in black and white, they are essentially taken from the image. So they are replaced with the median, the local median in this three by three neighborhood. But we can get also of excessive amounts of salt and pepper noise can be removed with this technique. And this is one of the reasons why it's very popular in image processing and also in pre-processing of medical images. Now, another very important technique is image segmentation. And for segmentation, we will discuss only very simple approaches. And the idea that we want to follow is that we essentially have two objects in the image and one is essentially the object and the other one is the background. Now, if we have only two things in the image, foreground and background, then we can pick a threshold in order to separate the two. So, for example, we could do that for organs that can be differentiated by contrast or to figure out where the bone in the image is. Now, the idea is then that we define a function that takes the image f, checks whether the position f of x, y exceeds the threshold, then we assign value 1, and we assign value 0 otherwise. So we binarize the image, so there's only two values in the image after we are finished with the processing. So here we have an example histogram, and here we only have two objects. And here we would like to choose our threshold such that the two Gaussian bell shapes here are being separated. So here we can, for example, take the intersection of Gaussians or the so-called Otsu's method. If we want to pick this threshold, then we essentially end up with different images. Here you can see examples for the original input image on the left hand side. And then we see the histogram on the bottom. And you see here that we essentially have three Gaussians. So we have one for the background that is all close to zero. Then we have one 
for essentially the brain tissue that is the peak in the center and then we have the skull and bony tissues on the right hand side. Now if I pick the threshold between the two peaks on the left you can see that we are essentially assigning the brain tissue and the skull tissue to our segmentation mask. If I pick the threshold higher then I'm segmenting essentially only the skull. So this way we can in a very simple approach already start segmenting structures that we want to analyze in the image. Let's go to a simpler example and this is where you can see the power of Otsu's method. So in Otsu's method you essentially compute a test statistic at every histogram bin and then you decide to set the threshold at the bit bin where this test statistic is minimal. So you would iterate over all the bins, compute the statistic and then assign at the position where you got the lowest statistic. Here this very simple example, now we had some background that is in a dark gray and some objects that are in a light gray. And if we now compute the binarization of this, you see that we can very nicely differentiate the circle and the ellipse from the background using the segmentation approach. Now once you have masks that are images that only consist of zeros and ones, then we can start talking about morphological operations. Now morphological operations interpret the image as set. And you can say now that ones and zeros essentially mean that you're part of the set or not. So your entire image becomes a set of tuples. So you have the pixel x, y and the value of f of x, y. So this is a set of all the points and then you introduce a so-called morphological operator that consists of a so-called structuring element and the operation. Now the idea of the structuring element is to define a neighborhood in which you apply the operation. So here we have a couple of kernels, you could say, the structuring elements. And on the left hand side, you see a three by three neighborhood. But you could also pick a neighborhood like this plus shape or the diamond shape. Or you could even take structuring elements that are only in one direction or even in very strange elements, like the one here on the right hand side, which has this L kind of shape. They are determined by the purpose where you want to use them for and if you use them then you can go ahead and apply a specific operation on your image. So here you can see an example where we apply the so-called binary erosion. And the binary erosion will return true if and only if all elements in the structuring element are part of the mask. So what happens here is you have the input on the left hand side, then we have three different positions of the structuring element and you see the outcome in red and green. So the red structuring elements, they will not be fulfilled because there is at least one element that is not part of the mask, so the output will be zero towards the output of the morphological operation. Only the green element is completely within the mask and will therefore be preserved. And this is also why it's called erosion, because we essentially can shrink masks. So by repeated application of erosion, you shrink masks and can reduce their size. So if you have a problem with over segmentation and you want to make your masks just a little bit smaller, then you pick 
erosion. On the contrary, you can apply an operation that is called dilation. And dilation now essentially returns true as soon as one element of the structuring element is touching the mask. So here you see the input on the left hand side and now again three different positions for the structuring element and only the red one is returning false because it never touches the mask. The two green ones will both return true and this then results on the output on the right hand side where you see that we are kind of expanding the mask. So this is why it's called dilation because we are dilating, we are increasing the size of the mask. These effects can also be applied to grayscale operations. In grayscale operations, you would then replace the logical operations that we had earlier with minimum and maximum within the structuring element. And then you assign essentially at the center element the respective result of the maximum over the structuring element or the minimum of the structuring element. We can also combine morphological operations and one combination is opening. Opening is applying first erosion then dilation. So first we shrink and then we expand. And Opening is very useful if you want to preserve the size of the mask, but you want to get rid of small outliers. If you have small antennas, like the one in the example here, you can get rid of them with erosion. There is also the opposite. You dilate first and then erode. And this is called closing, because if you have small gaps in the mask, they will be filled because you dilate first. So the gaps are closed. Then you erode and shrink the mask again to the original size. So you see that these concepts can also be applied to our idea using grayscale values, using maximum minimum operations. You can also use quantiles. So there's many different ways how you can expand on those morphological operations. And of course, we won't be able to cover this in this class anymore but I can give you a hint on further reading. If you want to know more about these techniques, then you can go to our textbook. There we have a little more details on all of the different operations. We also have these examples in there. And I very much recommend to have a look at the respective chapter in the book. So thank you very much for listening. I hope you now got the first impression on all the different things that can be done with image processing. We are only touching this here. There's many, many more things in image analysis and organ segmentation, multi-organ segmentation. But this is all parts of image processing that you can learn about in your later studies. So if you like this and you want to figure out what is happening in the image, how large is the liver, where are the bones, where are anatomical landmarks, this is all image processing. And we actually have two more lectures on medical image processing. There is diagnostic medical image processing and interventional medical image processing, which is available for you towards the end of your bachelor's studies, beginning of master's. So we recommend to take the class in the fifth or sixth semester, because then you'll have all the mathematical foundations to dive deep into the domain of medical image processing. So this ends our excursion into systems theory and image processing. 
And in the next videos, we will look into different modalities. And the first one that we'll start with is going to be endoscopy. So thank you very much for watching and looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye bye.